Mining is an inherently risky business. Over the years, major mine disasters have resulted in the deaths and injuries of thousands of miners in the United States. There have been over 50 major mine disasters and accidents in the United States in the past. These disasters also resulted in innovations in approaches to mine design, operations, and the training of miners and mine rescue teams. In addition, Congress responded to these disasters with new laws designed to create mandatory safety and health standards to eliminate fatal accidents, reduce the frequency and severity of non-fatal accidents, minimize health hazards, and promote improved safety and health conditions in the nation's mines. This video provides an overview of innovative tools available to mine operators to assess the risk of significant mine emergencies, the mine's preparedness to respond to them, the readiness of mine rescue teams, and the readiness of responsible persons. First, let's review a few of the more prominent mine emergencies here in the United States. In May of 1972, the Sunshine Mine in Kellogg, Idaho, had one of the country's best underground metal-nonmetal -metal ventilation systems. And that is what led to one of the most deadly accidents in American mining history. For many years, the Sunshine was the nation's leading producer of silver. At the time of the accident, it was nearly 6,000 feet deep, contained hundreds of miles of worked-out areas, and employed almost 500 people. Due to the mine's depth and the host rock consisting of unburnable quartzite, it was thought that fires in mines like the Sunshine were impossible. Hard rock mines don't burn, was common wisdom. What wasn't considered was that the timber supports, foam insulation, and mining equipment within the complex could burn, and the carbon monoxide gas produced by the burning would be far more deadly than any fire. In May of 1972, a fire ignited within an abandoned stope at the Sunshine Mine. Ninety-one miners died from carbon monoxide poisoning. Only two miners were rescued. If the Sunshine had performed regular risk assessments, it is possible that the fire could have been avoided. The Diamond Crystal Salt Company mine operated in New Iberia, Louisiana, under Lake Penure. In November of 1980, the mine had just performed a successful evacuation drill of all underground miners. A few days later, an exploratory drilling rig, operated by Texaco, drilled into the mine at the 1,300-foot level, filling the mine with water and emptying the lake through the expanding drill hole. The resulting sinkhole swallowed the drilling platform, 11 barges, a tugboat, trees, and 65 acres of the surrounding countryside. The escape capsule was launched through the head frame. Fortunately, no lives were lost. This disaster could have been avoided if a thorough risk assessment had been performed, saving millions of dollars in equipment and cleanup costs. The Kew Creek Mine Rescue took place in Somerset County, Pennsylvania, when nine miners were trapped underground for over 77 hours from July 24th through the 28th of 2002. A production crew mined into an abandoned mine on the one left section, allowing water to flood the workings. Trapped by the rising water, the miners used a rescue capsule to escape. Another nine miners working on the two left section exited the mine before the water cut off their escape. The mine's operator had been using the wrong map, which showed the abandoned mine's location to be farther away than it was. The map they should have been using was later found in a mining museum. If the mine had been implementing regular risk and readiness assessments, this potential disaster might have been avoided. Following a mine emergency preparedness and response holistic gap analysis in 2012, the Mine Safety and Health Administration, or MSHA, identified the need for development of risk and readiness assessment models for MSHA and the mining industry. MSHA's objective was to evolve existing theoretical concepts for risk and readiness assessment into simplified tools that the mining industry could apply for use at operational levels. MSHA hired ABS Group, a recognized industry leader in safety risk management, to develop self-assessment models to help meet this objective. In September 2012, MSHA chartered a project to supply the coal mining industry with a proactive tool set for mine operators 
to self-assess the risks associated with underground coal mining operations to prevent major mine emergencies, assess the preparedness of mine operators to respond to an emergency, and measure the readiness of mine rescue teams and responsible persons to execute emergency plans. MSHA called for the development of four separate models. The first was a risk assessment model for coal mine operators to use in preventing major mine emergencies. The second model would assess coal mines' preparedness in responding to these emergencies. The remaining two models would assess the readiness of mine rescue teams and responsible persons. To support this effort, ABS Group assembled a team of consultants with experience developing risk and preparedness assessment tools for other government agencies and industries. The specialized team also included the late Dr. Christopher Byes, who had over 40 years of experience in critical aspects of mining, occupational, and environmental health and safety. ABS also thoroughly reviewed the literature covering historical mine disasters, typical hazards, and emergency response best practices. Data were examined from 1900 through 2006 to understand the loss control failures that led to incidents, provide a clear picture of the most common causal factors, and help understand where to focus emergency planning and response improvement efforts. In addition, ABS surveyed best practices for risk, readiness, and preparedness assessment from other countries and industries, specifically Australia, South Africa, and aviation. Following the development of assumptions and frameworks for each model, ABS organized a series of mining industry workshops with experts providing input on critical success factors, validating assessment criteria, and assisting in building out the models. MSHA and representatives from industry groups, including the National Mining Association, United Mine Workers of America, the Bituminous Coal Operators Association, and the Joseph A. Holmes Association, also provided input into the final versions of the models, which were completed in August 2013. Since that time, these models have been updated extensively. Models help mine operators make safety-related decisions. The models use a series of worksheets and risk indexing method to enable mine operators to assess their own operations. Outputs, which include the mine's risk score, emergency preparedness score, and readiness score, provide immediate information for the mine operator to make decisions related to safety management systems, safety culture, emergency preparedness, and the readiness of first responders. Inherent in the model's design is the self-assessment approach. In an inspection environment, where an external entity conducts a review or audit, everyone hopes that the inspector doesn't find problems. In a self-assessment environment, where the mine's management team runs the review, Everyone should be looking to uncover unaddressed issues to highlight and correct. Therefore, the mine's top management must establish an environment of candor, courage, and commitment. Used as a self-assessment tool, mine operators can use the results to quickly develop action plans to address areas for improvement, thereby reducing risks and improving the preparedness and readiness of their operations. This includes making critical decisions regarding safety management systems, safety culture, emergency preparedness, and emergency response. Operators can also develop action plans to address areas for improvement, thereby reducing risks and improving preparedness and operational readiness. There are several benefits to utilizing the risk assessment and preparedness models. They range from ensuring compliance with regulations to making important improvements at your mine, thereby giving you an awareness of potential risks and your mine's level of preparedness to deal with those risks. These models will help you become an industry leader in prevention and response, and possibly lead to reductions in insurance rates. You will gain insights into your spectrum of risk, including how it may change over time, and shed light on what actions could improve your mine's risk profile. Most importantly, these models will make your mine safer. No one can stop all incidents from occurring. You can't prevent all disasters, but if something happens, and you knew of an issue and didn't address it, you are in trouble. With an inspection, 
everyone hopes that the inspector doesn't find problems. In an assessment, everyone is looking for unaddressed problems to highlight and correct. These models are designed to be a self-assessment, not an external inspection by the government. You are looking at your own organization with a critical eye toward discovering problems and developing action plans to correct them. This helps to prevent a major mine disaster, ensuring preparedness and readiness if an event occurs. Specifically, the self-assessment approach enables a mine operator to identify problems that are often overlooked, bring together people who know the most about the mine, rely on the judgment and experience of the mine's management team to develop action plans, provide a track record of continuous improvement, discover industry best practices and common problems, increase the confidence of mine managers in preparedness, and reinforce the belief that you have done all you can do to prevent a mine disaster. The models are also an opportunity to discover and share best practices, increasing the confidence in your management team's preparedness for emergencies. The criteria for assessing factors in over 200 areas of mine operations breaks down into a simple score, with green meaning you are good to go compared to industry standards, yellow meaning you are making progress but there's still more to do, and red indicating that there is serious work that remains to be done. Any red scores are a top priority for management. During the assessment, information from the mine management team is compiled into the models, which are then used by the team in developing and implementing action plans. One of the safety managers at a mine we visited said that this assessment provided their safety training agenda for the next year. The self-assessment process generally takes one and a half to two days initially, with subsequent assessments taking less time to complete. Self-assessments should ideally occur once every three to six months. The participation of several mine personnel is critical. The mine foreman, shift supervisor, mine examiner, responsible persons, mine engineer, and mine rescue team members are all vital participants in this phase. The process itself is comprised of four parts. Reviewing the assessment criteria and factors within the model, team discussion of each factor within the assessment model with an emphasis on candor, courage, and commitment, resulting in a score of green, yellow, or red for each factor, a discussion within the team for the reasons for each score, and development of an action plan to move all yellow and red items toward a green score. The overall summary assessment is presented as a scorecard. The scorecard can be easily used to identify areas of strength, green items, across all four models, and highlight areas for improvement, the yellow and red items. This chart shows the results from an actual assessment at an underground coal mine. Note the overall score reflects the lowest rating among all the models to draw the attention of the mine management team to the areas that need attention. As you can see, this mine did not meet the industry standard in several areas, requiring improvements shown by the red items. However, the mine met industry standards in several areas shown in green. Several areas shown in yellow need improvement. Another powerful feature of the self-assessment model is the ability of a company to identify trends among mines. These could be organization-wide or show improvements over time as a result of implementing action plans. In this example, two assessments of the same mine that were conducted one year apart show excellent improvement in many areas. All of the mines we visited were able to identify best practices that they had implemented. These could be shared through forums such as this to improve safety industry-wide. Some examples include an informal implementation process which results in quicker approvals and completion times, workforce completing daily risk assessment cards, known as workplace risk assessment and control evaluations, to target low probability, high consequence events, monitoring systems over and above requirements, lower alarm levels than required, Installation of proximity detection on all CMs, scoops, and trammers. A level of team training and equipment readiness that exceeds industry standards. 
acquisition of the latest wireless communication and tracking systems for emergencies, and strong succession planning for company employees. Miners who have participated in these assessments were impressed by the dialogue inspired among the workforce, making them think about things that have been taken for granted. They found that the focus group environment fully engaged mine management and staff through the process, producing new understandings and insights about their preparedness to reduce risk further. Participants are able to engage on substantive issues with each other, dealing with real issues within mines. Everyone had equal input, increasing buy-in from the team. Mine management and staff's overall self-awareness increased, helping to limit risk and reduce insurance costs. As GCC Energy's Vice President Trent Peterson noted, it is critical to have a broad, thorough, and objective measuring stick to assess risk readiness, identify gaps, and develop action plans to either maintain or improve performance. For those of us in a position of responsibility in a complex organization, this type of tool provides an objective audit to assure senior executives, board members, and owners that systems are in place to evaluate risk and readiness. We've explained the need for risk and readiness assessments in the mining industry and shown how the assessment process is implemented and the benefits that mine operators have experienced. Consider performing a self-assessment at your mine.